Hello students, welcome to my channel Omni Gyan. The topic that we are going to learn today is a poem Ode to Autumn by John Keats. Okay, so let us learn a few things about John Keats. So John Keats was born on October 31st 1795 in London, England, okay, and he died in February 23rd, 1821 in Rome, uh, Papal States, Italy. Uh, he is an English romantic lyric poet, okay, who devoted his short life to the perfection of a poetry marked by the vivid imagery, great sensuous appeal, and an attempt to express a philosophy through classical legend so imagery means presenting images okay images in the sense say somebody is narrating you a story and uh, you imagine pictures based on the story inside your mind okay that is imagery so john keats uh, was a great imagist actually he used images which were very vivid realistic to the reader okay through his poems reader could imagine pictures in his mind okay so today his poems and letters are some of the most popular and most analyzed in english literature okay so in almost mm, all the classes uh, starting from school till the university level John Keats poems have become uh, very common in their syllabus okay uh, and it is one of the most analyzed his poems are actually his poetry is one of the most analyzed in English literature and some of his acclaimed works okay some of his most famous poems include O to a Nightingale okay Sleep on Poetry and the famous sonnet it, it is actually his first mature poem Okay, sonnet as you know is a 14 line poem on first looking into Chapman's Homer. Okay, and obviously your poem in your syllabus, O to a Nightingale. Okay, let's move on. So the main idea or theme. The central idea of the poem is its appreciation of nature. Okay, so the title of the poem itself autumn which is a season so season applies obviously to nature according to different seasons there are natural changes right so the central idea of the poem is its appreciation of nature and the changes that occur in nature there are several changes which occur in nature right say day night morning afternoon evening these kind of changes changes in the weather changes in the climate okay and as we learn the poem, we'll know what exactly the changes are that occurs in the poem. Moreover, the passage of time is also present in the poem. Okay, the passage of time. Passage of time in the sense, I told you, morning to afternoon, afternoon to evening, evening to night. Okay, this passage of time is also present in the poem. Okay, Keats beautifully presents the imageries to the readers. I told you what are imageries when somebody narrates you something for example you're able to think about several pictures in your mind based on the narration right say for example the uh, somebody's telling you a story on uh, you know story on uh, uh, you know two boys uh, two friends who are very close friends uh, one day they were walking on the road so you're able to imagine inside your mind the picture of two boys they're walking on the road and different different people will imagine different different pictures okay not not same pictures will come to the mind of everybody right it depends on your maturity your understanding your knowledge okay let's move on then so ode to autumn now what do we mean by the word ode so the word ode means a lyrical poem okay where a subject is addressed okay uh, anyone can be addressed 
okay any any subject subject means anybody can be addressed okay and here in this poem the subject is who the subject is autumn so ode to autumn so in one sense it is autumn who is addressed by the poet john keats so ode to autumn means firstly the poem is a lyrical poem lyrical poem means that has a beautiful rhyming pattern okay and another is ode to autumn so here ode means in this particular poem in this context ode here means that john keats the poet is addressing whom to autumn that means he is speaking to autumn that means autumn is personified here as a human being okay personification we say personify okay so personify personify means uh you know uh, you are imagining somebody as a human being okay and that somebody or something is not a living thing okay right so let's move on okay now we will study the poem okay so this is stanza 1 season of mists and mellow fruitfulness close bosom friend of the maturing sun conspiring with him how to load and bless with fruit the vines that round the thatch eaves run to bend with apples the most cottage trees and fill all fruit with ripeness to the core to swell the gourd and plump the hazel shells with a sweet kernel to set budding more and still more later flowers for the bees until they think warm days will never cease for summer has overbrimmed their clammy cells okay so this is the first stanza and we will learn now the explanation of the first stanza please listen very carefully so this is the explanation okay so in the first stanza of to autumn that means ode to autumn okay keats personifies autumn as one i told you personification okay a non living thing is considered as a living thing personification okay something is personified as somebody else okay generally a human being keats personifies autumn as one who is friends with the sun okay so keats uh, okay one more thing before i go into the explanation please keep your books in your hands so that you can follow the lines and understand the explanation okay so keats personifies autumn as one who is friends with the who is friends with the sun so if we go back season of mists and mellow fruitfulness close bosom friend of the maturing sun so obviously the poet is saying that autumn okay season of mists and mellow fruitfulness uh, in the first line itself and the first word itself says season of mists and mellow fruitfulness which is autumn here right this is autumn this is autumn right so season of mists and mellow fruitfulness close bosom friend right close bosom friend okay close bosom friend means close friend of the sun so autumn and sun are close friends right autumn and sun are close friends okay as one who is friends with the sun the personified autumn and sun they conspire okay they are together they are planning together what are the planning what are autumn and sun planning they are planning on how to bring fruit and vegetation to their most ripened state okay so sun and autumn uh, these two friends they are planning to do what they are planning to bring fruit and vegetation okay the fruits the vegetables that grow sun and autumn are planning to make them ripen all right okay it is just before harvest time okay so harvest time has not come now harvest time will come when the crop has grown to its fullest okay it's it's all uh, you know ripened 
uh, after that harvest season will come harvest time will come but right now right now the uh, crops has just started to grow okay the crops have just started to grow so it is just before the harvest time okay right okay i mean it, it is about to be harvested okay it is about to be harvested not completely uh, before the harvest time it is just about to be harvested okay everything is ready the plants are ripe and full it is about to be harvested but not yet harvested so just mark the words just before harvest time right so autumn is in a vibrant state okay autumn is in a vibrant state so vibrant that the bees might think the warm days will never cease okay so vibrant means it is so lively so active autumn is in such an active state that even the bees think that autumn is permanent okay and autumn will never die it is permanent okay and you know that when fruits and vegetables grow it means that flowers are also there all around and uh, the happiest are the bees okay who will collect juice from the flowers the notion of mists and mellow fruitfulness indicate an early part of day mist means you already know mist early part of the day when you wake up early in the morning okay very early in the morning you'll find dew drops on the grasses okay and you'll find mists all around it's it's little foggy foggy right okay so that indicates it is an early part of the day it is an early part of the day okay mobile ta bodai babar ekto silent e kore de okay that means we can say that stanza 1 the time in stanza 1 is morning the time in stanza 1 is early morning morning okay the time in stanza 1 is morning please remember this okay this is very important the time in stanza 1 is morning all right so keats even ends the first stanza by saying that summer has overbrimmed their clammy cells okay please mark this line okay this means what summer has overbrimmed their clammy cells means that it is means it means that the end of the seasons of growth has pushed the elements past their points of ripeness that means what that summer season okay has already produced plenty of fruits and vegetables that it is now time to harvest those fruits and vegetables or even the crops also okay so every fruits and vegetables have have ripened to the highest point and it is now about to be harvested so this is the meaning of summer has overbrimmed their clammy cells okay we will learn the meaning of uh, certain words in the next slide let's check so here conspiring i told you working together so sun and autumn are working together to make the fruits and vegetables and other crops uh to its ripen state okay thatch eaves the meaning of thatch eaves is the edge of the thatched roofs you see if this is a thatched roof say for example this is a house if this is a thatched roof okay these areas these this corner areas okay these corner areas these are the thatch eaves okay the edges okay the edges the linings of the thatched roofs right and overbrimmed i told you overbrimmed means to be too full okay overbrimmed means too full so uh, summer has already produced too much of fruits and vegetables okay the uh, the the trees are loaded with with fruits and the plants are overloaded with vegetables so the time has come that uh, people harvest those fruits and vegetables okay so that is the meaning of overbrimmed with clammy cells right 
Okay, so let's move on. Stanza 2. Who hath not seen thee oft amid thy store? Sometimes whoever seeks abroad may find thee sitting careless on a granary floor. Thy hair soft lifted by the winnowing wind, or on a half reaped furrow sound sleep, drowsed with the fume of poppies while thy hook spares the next swath and all its twined flowers. And sometimes like a gleaner thou dost keep steady thy laden head across a brook, or by a side oppress with patient look thou watchest the last oozings hours by hours. Okay. Let's check the explanation. These are the this is stanza two. Okay. Stanza two, the whole of stanza two. Let's learn the explanation now. Okay. So autumn is directly addressed in the second stanza as the. Okay, let's check the line again here. The. So the poet is directly now, directly addressing autumn as the. The means you. In poetic language, poets use the word the instead of you. Okay, you, the. So, who hath not seen you often in thy store? Okay, we will learn the explanation now. So, when we address somebody as you, we mean to say that, or rather the poet, as we have learned, personifies autumn as a human being. Okay, some say that autumn is, in some explanations, it is said that autumn is a lady. Okay, uh, again, in some explanations, it is said that autumn is goddess. Okay. So, in any ways, autumn is personified as a lady, okay. But in the poem, because we are not analyzing too deep, okay, we just need to know the summary, um, the meaning of the poem, the central meaning of the poem and stanza-wise explanation. So, we will not go too much deep into that, okay. You can stick to this explanation, there's no problem. So, autumn is directly addressed in the second stanza as the, okay, you. The means you, I told you already, okay. So, the speaker considers autumn during harvest time so now in the second stanza the harvest time has come first stanza is just before harvest and second stanza is the harvest time the actual harvest time when the crops the fruits the vegetables are going to be harvested by the farmers okay by the people so again personified as a human being i told you autumn is personified as a the the moment you get the word the which means you you have to automatically understand that uh, Autumn is personified as a human being. Okay, so autumn is personified as a human being. The speaker thinks of autumn sitting or on a granary floor as the grain is being harvested. So granary floor here means the field, okay, the field where the crops are planted. Okay, that is the meaning of granary flow. Okay. So as the grain is being harvested, okay. So when people are harvesting the crops in the field, so uh, the poet says that autumn you are sitting on the field when the people are cutting the crops okay cutting the fruits cutting the vegetables harvesting their crops okay you are sitting there you're sitting right on the field and watching everything okay then the speaker considers autumn asleep so autumn does what autumn sometimes sleep also there okay autumn will be lying there uh, very idly autumn will be lying there asleep here does not mean that autumn is sleeping autumn is lying there okay autumn is lying there and watching the harvest okay then the speaker considers autumn asleep made drowsy by the perfume of the poppies so poppies are certain plants okay which are grow grown in the field poppy plant okay fume here means perfume okay the short form of fume fume here means perfume okay so fume here means perfume okay so why does the autumn sleep the aut autumn actually does not sleep but autumn lies there uh, in a lethargic way why because autumn is feeling drowsy because of the perfume of the poppy plant okay the poppy plants provides an uh, intoxicating effect on the poet so the poet 
is lying uh, idly half asleep okay on the field on the granary floor okay on the field okay because he f uh, it feels drowsy it feels drowsy because of the perfume of the poppy plant all right okay let's move on finally the autumn is watching the apples in a cider press we will learn what is a cider press okay in the next slide i have provided the meaning so finally the autumn is watching the apples in a cider press okay let me tell you cider press is actually a machine that presses the apple to produce cider cider is an alcoholic drink sometimes c y d e r is actually this is this is a poetic spelling okay the actual spelling of cider is c i d e r the actual spelling of cider is c i d e r and press is a machine actually okay crushing machine it crushes the apples to provide cider to provide juice uh cider is i told you an alcoholic drink okay since the first stanza gives subtle indications of being early in the day i told you first stanza early morning okay the second stanza would be midday okay this this stanza the second stanza is midday or afternoon as autumn has spent hours by hours you remember hours by hours uh, the line occurs in the second stanza of the poem hours by hours so uh, after stanza 1 in stanza 2 the words hours by hours itself means that autumn has spent a lot of time in the field right so that means what a lot of time has been already spent so from morning afternoon has come so second stanza the time of second stanza is what the time of second stanza is afternoon please remember first stanza morning second stanza afternoon okay so as by as watching the harvest a sense of sometimes gone by okay so in the second stanza we see that autumn is personified as a human being autumn is sitting on the granary floor on the field uh, watching the harvest going on and autumn sometimes falls half asleep or rather maybe asleep why because of the uh, perfume of the poppy plant that produces an intoxicating effect okay on the poet and finally autumn is doing what autumn is watching the apples in a cider press cider press i told you is a crushing machine okay watching the apples being crushed and cider being produced cider is an alcoholic drink okay and the second stanza the day in the second stanza the time of the day in the second stanza is afternoon right it is afternoon okay i hope you have understood let's move on so these are the word meanings as i told you cider press uh, sometimes cider c y d e r is is actually uh, spelled as c i d e r cider press a press a crushing machine a press press here means a crushing machine okay a press for crushing apples to make cider which is an alcoholic drink so cider is an alcoholic drink okay and the meaning of the word winnowing in the poem is separating the wheat from the chaff so here you can see this picture so in this picture you can see that what happens this women is actually winnowing okay this is a simple winnowing you get winnowing machines also but this is a simple winnowing techniques that uh, people do actually here you see uh, the grain has been harvested okay from the field and she is now winnowing means the husks of the uh, grain is flying away which is not required for cooking at all and the main product is getting collected down this will be cooked this portion will be cooked okay even in rice also the husks fly away and the rice falls on the okay the uncooked ones falls on the this is not cooked rice obviously okay this has just been harvested so the husks fly away and the main food product is getting collected down here okay so this is called winnowing okay separating the wheat from the chaff so here wheat is separated from the chaff chaff is not required actually for cooking it is the outer covering not required for cooking it is the outer covering that is not cooked and that is 
being separated from the wheat okay wheat is the main food product i hope you have understood let's move on then okay here we have some other word meanings also occurring in stanza two gleaner is one who gathers the remaining crop after the reaper has harvested the field so when the reaper has harvested harvested the field so somebody will do what there's another person who will do what there's another person who will do what who will gather the remaining crop so the remaining crops are gathered by the gleaner okay after the reaper has harvested the field and brook means a small stream okay brook means a small stream okay let's move on then this is stanza 3 the final stanza okay where are the songs of spring eh where are they think not of them thou hast thy music too while bard clouds bloom the soft dying day and touch the stubble plains with rosy hue then in a wailful choir the small gnats mourn among the river shallows born aloft or sinking as the light wind leaves or dies and full grown lambs loud bleat from hilly bourn hedge cricket sing and now with treble soft the red breast whistles from a garden croft and gathering swallows twitter in the skies so this is the explanation for stanza 3 let's see this after the first stanza of ripeness the first stanza of ripeness and the second stanza of harvest please mark the words first stanza ripeness and the time of the day is morning second stanza is the harvest time and the time of the day is afternoon right this is morning ripeness morning first stanza ripeness it might be there in choose the correct answer also in your exam okay so please uh, note these things so first stanza is about ripeness time of the day is morning second stanza is the harvest time and the time of the day is afternoon okay or midday also the speaker tells autumn not to worry about the upcoming winter or the sounds of spring so the speaker is telling autumn that autumn don't worry about the upcoming winter because winter is coming and in winter what happens we all know the leaves fall on the ground okay uh, there is no fruits or vegetables growing okay the season is completely dry right so uh, since winter time is coming the poet is telling autumn that autumn don't worry about the upcoming winter or the sounds of spring okay in spring there will be no again in spring time also there is no fruits or vegetables growing okay there's not much fruits and vegetables growing it is only autumn summer autumn where fruits and vegetables grow to the fullest okay so because winter is coming and after winter there is spring so it is natural that autumn would get sad because we already know that autumn is personified as a human being okay so the poet addresses autumn as a human being only so the poet says autumn that autumn so since human beings have emotions so autumn is also you know uh, it is obvious that autumn would also have emotions so the poet is saying that autumn don't worry about the upcoming winter or even the sounds of spring sounds of spring because in spring time uh, there are birds because it is a time where flower grows uh, we have green greenery all around okay but there is no fruits and vegetables growing okay so mm, the poet is telling autumn okay rather consoling aut- autumn that don't worry about the upcoming winter or even the sounds of spring the music of birds these and that uh, that we generally hear in spring time okay so don't worry about all these things okay even though the end of autumn signals death of some vegeta- vegetation and shorter colder days autumn songs are just as natural as springs and summers so the poet is actually consoling autumn that autumn don't worry about the upcoming winter or the sounds of spring your songs are excellent too okay uh, generally uh, spring time is considered to be uh, a time of music when birds sing actually but so autumn is telling that nobody will uh, pay attention to me any longer uh, when spring will come okay but the poet is telling autumn that don't worry your song is excellent too 
okay your song is excellent too and autumn generally signals the end of autumn generally signals the death of vegetate vegetation as i told you that it is autumn time where vegetables and fruits grow the crops grow and after autumn you won't find anything okay and uh, therefore uh, autumn is natural it's natural that autumn would become very sad so the poet says that don't worry autumn your music is excellent too okay and it is as excellent as spring and summers and even winters also okay so don't worry you are excellent in your own way so rather the poet is giving encouragement to autumn that don't worry okay you are excellent too in your own ways okay interestingly the speaker encourages autumn i told you the speaker is encouraging autumn so interestingly the speaker encourages autumn to appreciate her own sounds okay her here means autumn's so i told you autumn is personified as a human being but as a lady human being okay so the poet encourages speaker here is the poet so the poet encourages autumn that autumn your sound your music is excellent too just like spring time and summer time your music is excellent too okay in spite of the melancholy symbols that accompany the colder seasons you see uh, please try to understand very nicely okay you see that after autumn what are the seasons that are going to come winter and then spring so the end of autumn is considered to be the death of autumn all right okay so autumn is sad naturally because my time is getting over autumn's time is getting over so autumn is naturally sad so the poet is actually encouraging autumn that don't worry you will come again and in spite of the melancholy melancholy means in spite of the sorrow okay in spite of the sorrow in spite of the sorrow and melancholy is generally associated with sorrow song okay a sad song so in spite of the melancholy symbols that autumn is going to end and uh winter and spring time is going to come so it is the death of autumn despite of this melancholy despite of this sorrow there is still a hope that autumn will come again right autumn will come again so this hope actually this is the hope that actually the poet is giving uh autumn that don't worry autumn you will come again you will return again okay so this is this is all about uh, the encouragement that the poet is giving the uh, giving to the season autumn right okay so we continue with the explanation of stanza 3 so at twilight the small gnats okay these are small insects that hum above the shallows of the river okay so the small insects will hum okay above the shallows of the river okay and full grown lambs bleat from the hills lambs you know okay so full grown lambs they will be bleating from the hills bleating are the sounds made by the lambs bleating from the hills crickets will sing okay these are the list of animals uh, and insects being given please mark these things okay this will be important for your general questions and answers and even match the uh, choose the correct answers also then there is a robin bird which will be whistling okay and shallow or uh, swallows i'm sorry swallows swallows are certain birds okay swallows uh, who have gathered for the coming migration they will sing from the sky okay so uh, the list of insects birds animals that we find are these okay so insects will hum gnats will hum okay and then lambs will bleat from the hills crickets will sing robin bird will whistle and swallows swallows are birds actually swallows will sing from the sky swallows are certain birds who have here in this poem they are gathering for their coming migration they'll move from one place to another place okay migrate so they will sing from the sky okay at twilight twilight means the end of evening that means it is night time the end of the end of evening okay so this is the explanation of 
stanza three. So first stanza time of the day is morning, second stanza time of the day is afternoon, and third stanza the word twilight itself means third stanza the time of the day is twilight means a time when the sun has uh, gone beyond the horizon. Okay, gone beyond the horizon, but not completely set because when the, if the sun will completely set. That means it is night time, right? But the sun has almost gone down. Almost gone down. It is dark. Okay. So the coming of night. So we can say that it is almost, almost going to be night time. Okay. So if in the exam it is asked that what time of the day is in the third stanza, you can say that it is night. Okay. I hope you have understood. I hope you have understood very clearly. Okay. And then. Let's continue with stanza three explanation. See words like soft, dying, whale, full, you'll find in the poem, third stanza. Moon. These all indicate a morning time. Morning means a sad time. A morning time, a sad time. Okay, when somebody has died, we mourn actually, M O U R N. We actually mourn. So we know that it is the death of it is the death of autumn time. All right because new seasons are going to come after autumn so autumn is sad so soft dying the poet has used the words like soft dying whale fool moon which indicates a morning time okay which morning time is what is the morning time the end of autumn if it is asked in the exam what is the morning time you can say that it is the end of autumn season and which seasons are going to come you can say that after autumn winter and spring will follow right so the end of any season indicates change. We all know this is obvious. The end of any season, it indicates what? Some kind of changes are going to come in the weather, in the climate. Okay. From springtime, after spring comes summer, then monsoon. So springtime, flowers grow. Okay. Uh, there are honeybees. Then all around, you'll find greenery and greenery. And after that summer, which is very hot. Okay. Springtime, it is moderate. Winter time, it is too cold. So every the end of any season brings change and since this is the natural state of things the melancholy is joined with a sense of joy now you see the explanation here is that why see it is a sad time but still there is joy why because there is hope that every year autumn will come this is the hope that the poet is giving to autumn that autumn though you're going now but you will come again next year so this melancholia is joined with a sense of joy okay that changes occur but autumn is going to return again next year okay and not only next year every year autumn is going to return so this is the hope the encouragement that the poet is giving to autumn okay so even though keats the speaker mourned the end of the autumn he celebrated its sights smells and sounds for what they are see every season is important in their own ways and in this poem the poet is addressing autumn season because autumn could be his favorite season see we all have our favorite season and when the season ends we become sad but we enjoy some of the aspects of that season say winter season okay if winter is your favorite season that means you enjoy some aspect of winter Say for example, you like to wear colorful sweaters, jackets in winter season. Okay, maybe you like uh, the weather. Okay, and in winter season, uh, evening time generally uh, tea snacks are taken too often, too much. Okay, winter time is also considered to be holidays for many. Okay, because schools are closed. So these are some of the aspects that you enjoy about winter. So here in the same manner some of the aspects that the poet enjoys about autumn and the poet appreciates about autumn is sights okay the visuals presented by autumn okay the the mm, pictures outside okay right okay the trees the fields the fruits the vegetables growing all these sights the smells of the fruits the smells of the vegetables the smell of the atmosphere okay this is enjoyed by the poet the sounds okay all are the sounds i've already given you a list of insects animals and birds that produces sounds 
during autumn time okay the lamb the swallows the uh, humming of the crickets okay uh, all these sounds are enjoyed by the poet very much okay right okay as the first stanza symbolizes morning we already know i have repeated several times first stanza symbolizes morning second stanza signal mid midday so i told you the final stanza signifies evening or night with the phrase soft dying day see dying day could uh, mean uh, late evening it could mean night also okay that depends on the choice given to you in the multiple uh, choice questionings okay in the choose the correct answer questionings it depends actually okay uh, the poet did not actually mention completely here whether it is night or whether it is late evening it is not evening actually it signifies late evening okay when the sun has gone below the horizon but not completely below okay uh, there is very less light okay uh, late evening that we say okay so the third stanza the final stanza may signify either it is late evening or night okay with the phrase soft dying day so you have the word soft dying day in the third stanza of the poem please note that okay so the completion of autumn is analogous to the completion of the day so completion of autumn means completion of the day see on the surface level a poem may look very easy but there are very uh, plenty of hidden meanings inside a poem okay plenty of hidden meanings inside the poem okay a poem may look something may be something but it may mean something else all right but here we are not going deeper into so much of the explanation so it is not required for uh, standard of class 9 you just have to understand the summary okay and appreciate poem the the most important part is that poetry is a very beautiful subject okay and if you uh, can appreciate poem you'll you'll develop many things inside you emotions okay uh, and a lot of uh, lyrical things inside you okay so you see the completion of autumn means that it is the end of the day the end of a certain time right okay so the natural progression of things i already told you in the in the first in the beginning slide where i told you that the main idea of the poem is change okay through autumn the poet has actually meant the changes that occur around us okay from morning to afternoon from afternoon to night again next day morning so when morning goes say morning is your favorite time so when morning goes or say let me take night okay so night time you are very happy why there's no school okay work is over you are able to lie on your bed and sleep okay take rest but when night is going to end you are worried about next day again morning okay many feel that uh, uh, you know many are little lazy so they don't wake up early in the morning or they like like to uh, like to sleep late okay in the morning too but again the hope that again night will come and i will be able to sleep okay so this is the thing natural progression of things okay okay so we must not be sad when something goes considering the fact that it will return again okay though not everything but there are few things that are certain to return again say winter season you love winter season and winter will go and summer season will come spring season will come your school field reopen in the month of february march right so you are sad but there's certain hope certain amount of hope inside you that again uh, next year or in few months winter will return again and we will get our holidays again so so natural progression of things right all right so let us learn the word meanings so here the difficult word meanings i have selected some of the difficult word meanings and a uh, uh, few of them with pictures so that you can understand better so stubble plains means the remaining stumps of the grains left after reaping so when the harvest is complete see this is the half cut crops can you see half cut so it was long these were very very long okay but then the harvest is complete and this stumps are left the stumps are left this is called stubble plains so the remaining stumps of grains these are the remaining stumps of grains okay half cut this is of no use now i mean 
no use in the sense you cannot eat it let's not go deeper into the meaning you can't eat it right the edible part has already been harvested has already been cut by the farmer taken home so this is the half cut okay this is called stubble planes right through a picture it is very uh, easy to understand actually okay this is quite easy to understand because a croft is a small enclosed field or garden so a farmer may have a you know a piece of land like this okay a piece of land and this is his area he does not cross this area and here he grows his paddy his crops here he grows his paddy his crops it can be a domestic garden also personal garden of somebody enclosed area a small area where you grow fruits vegetables okay it's not a large piece of land it's a it's a small enclosed field or a personal garden so that is a garden croft okay i hope you have understood okay i have explained i have tried to explain the poem in a very very simple manner uh, so that you can understand right so thank you everyone please subscribe to the channel uh, share the video so that other students may be benefited and please uh, tell all your friends and those who are uh, who have this poem in the syllabus and those students who have this poem in the syllabus to follow the channel and uh, please uh, press the bell icon also so that whenever i upload a new video you'll get notifications okay thank you everyone and all the very best to all of you